on Kisses and Hugs Club today for singles and couples. Episode 66. The Trial of King Ahiomide. Losing his throne heirs. In the ancient African city of Ialehese, King Ahiomide ruled with wisdom and strength. His royal majesty, though revered throughout the empire, faced a profound sorrow. His four beautiful wives, chosen from across the land, could not bear children. This left the king and the entire empire deeply concerned, as there were no heirs to continue his legacy. In Ialehese, a tradition allowed a king's wife to leave him if she wished, provided the king granted her a community to lead, along with riches and servants. Believing the king to be the one unable to father children, three of the wives chose this option, leaving King Ahiomide in a state of despair and disgrace, with only his loyal wife, Odafolokak, remaining by his side. One day, a traveling preacher arrived in Ialehese, speaking of God's power and promise. He approached King Ahiomide with words of prophecy, saying, Your faith will be tested, O King, but put your trust in God, for he will always show up in your hour of need. Moved by the preacher's words, King Ahiomide found himself at a crossroads between the traditions of his ancestors and the newfound faith in Christianity. The ancient ways of Ialehese dictated consulting the oracle for guidance, believing in the power of ancestral spirits and rituals to shape destiny. The oracle was revered as the intermediary between the people and their gods, its decrees carrying weighty consequences for those who dared to defy them. Yet, the preacher's message of God's love and power resonated deeply with King Ahiomide and Queen Odafolokak. They began to question whether their barrenness was truly a curse from the gods or a test of faith from a higher power. In quiet moments, away from the court and the eyes of his advisors, King Ahiomide wrestled with the decision that lay before him, to continue venerating the oracle or to embrace the teachings of Jesus Christ. The pressure mounted as the palace buzzed with speculation and fear. Some advisors warned of dire consequences should the king turn his back on the oracle, a wrathful punishment that could claim his life and plunge the kingdom into chaos. The choice seemed stark, remain faithful to the customs that had governed Ialehese for generations, or step into the unknown realm of Christian faith. In a bold and defining moment, King Ahiomide chose to put his trust in God. Ignoring the ominous warnings and the counsel of his sheaves, he declared his allegiance to Jesus Christ and committed himself and Queen Odafolokak to a life of prayer and devotion. Together, they prayed earnestly for a child, believing that God would fulfill his promise in his time and in his way. As days turned into weeks, the tension within the palace grew palpable. Whispers of rebellion and dissent among the courtiers circulated, fueled by those who feared the repercussions of defying tradition. Yet, King Ahiomide remained resolute in his faith, finding strength in the teachings of the preacher and the unwavering support of Queen Odafolokak. Then came the day of reckoning, when the oracle's priests confronted King Ahiomide with solemn warnings of impending doom should he continue down the path of Christianity. The air in the throne room grew heavy with anticipation as the priests invoked the gods and awaited their divine judgment. But nothing happened. No thunderous bolts from the heavens. No sudden illness befell the king. Instead, a profound peace settled over King Ahiomide's heart, a peace that affirmed his decision and strengthened his resolve. It was a testament to the power of faith and the mercy of God, who protected those who trusted in him. The kingdom of Ialehese watched in awe as King Ahiomide and Queen Odafolokak continued to pray fervently, their faith growing stronger with each passing day. And true to God's promise in his appointed time, Odafolokak became pregnant, a miracle that filled the kingdom with joy. For nine months, the people of Ialehese rejoiced, eagerly awaiting the birth of the heir. When the time came, Odafolokak delivered two healthy baby boys, Ardeshinar and Ardi Deahir. The entire empire celebrated this joyous occasion, 
praising God for his blessings. However, the three former wives, consumed by envy and bitterness, plotted a sinister scheme. One moonless night, cloaked in darkness, they crept into the royal chamber. With silent determination, they stole the sleeping infants from their cradles, their hearts hardened by greed and desperation. The palace guards, loyal but unsuspecting, were deceived by the stealth of the wives. By the time their treachery was discovered, the three wives had disappeared into the night, leaving behind a distraught king and a devastated community. King Ahiomide, in anguish, declared a bountiful reward for anyone who could find and return his beloved sons. The entire city mourned, their hearts heavy with fear and sorrow. The kingdom was thrown into mourning, but King Ahiomide remembered the preacher's words. Put your trust in God, for he will always show up. The king's heart was heavy with grief, but he chose to cling to the promise of divine intervention rather than succumb to despair. His chiefs, deeply concerned for the future of the kingdom, urged him to consult the oracle, believing that ancient rituals and ancestral spirits might offer guidance and solace. Yet, King Ahiomide stood firm in his faith. Our help comes from the Lord, he proclaimed. We shall seek his face and trust in his mercy. Rejecting the counsel of his sheaves, he declared a time of fasting and prayer throughout Ielehese. He called upon the entire community to join him in seeking God's intervention, urging them to put aside their mourning garments and lift their hearts in faith. During this time of intense spiritual focus, King Ahiomide also made a bold and seemingly paradoxical declaration. Amidst the fasting and prayers, he announced seven days of jubilation and praise unto God. We will praise him for his faithfulness, the king declared, for he has promised to never leave us nor forsake us. This proclamation bewildered his sheaves and the people of Ielehese. How could they celebrate when the future of the kingdom hung in the balance, and the royal heirs were lost? The sheaves, in particular, were deeply puzzled and even frustrated. They approached the king, voicing their concerns with respectful but urgent tones. Your majesty, one sheaf began, our hearts are heavy with grief. The loss of the royal heirs is a profound tragedy. Should we not seek answers from the oracle, as our ancestors have done in times of great distress? King Ahiomide listened patiently, his expression resolute yet compassionate. I understand your concern, he replied, but our trust must be in God alone. The preacher's words echo in my heart. Put your trust in God, for he will always show up. This is our test of faith. We must not waver. Another sheaf, less convinced, pressed on. But your majesty, to declare jubilation in a time of such sorrow, how can we celebrate when our hearts are breaking? The king's eyes shone with a determined light. Our celebration is an act of faith. We are not rejoicing in the loss but in the assurance that God is with us, even in this darkest hour. We are declaring that our hope is not lost, that his promises are true, and that his deliverance is near. And so, despite the initial confusion and reluctance, the people of Ielehese obeyed their king. They joined in fasting and prayer, their voices rising in a chorus of praise and worship. They sang songs of faith, danced in hopeful expectation, and offered sacrifices of thanksgiving. The palace courtyard, once echoing with the sounds of sorrow, now resonated with hymns of praise and declarations of trust in God's unfailing love. As the days of jubilation unfolded, a miraculous change began to sweep through the kingdom. The air seemed lighter, the people's hearts lifted by their collective act of faith. Even the most skeptical of the sheaves could not deny the palpable presence of hope and divine assurance that settled over Ielehese. Meanwhile, the three wives journeyed to a distant town, seeking out a notorious herbalist known for his dark arts. They bargained with him, 
offering the infants as sacrifices for wealth and power. The herbalist, sensing the evil intent behind their request, consulted his oracle. The oracle, sensing the innocence of the babies and the darkness in the hearts of the women, refused their offering. Enraged and fearful of the oracle's warning, that death would befall them if they did not return the babies, they were compelled to bring the infants back to Yelahese. Their faith and hope were soon rewarded. The return of Ardeshinar and Ardi Deahir, the royal twins, brought immense relief and joy to the kingdom. King Ahiomide, filled with gratitude and awe at God's faithfulness, ordered the traitorous wives to be cast into the deepest dungeons of Ialehese as punishment for their betrayal. In gratitude for their deliverance and in recognition of God's mercy, King Ahiomide declared that henceforth, the people of Ialehese must serve God all their days. The city erupted in jubilation, celebrating not only the safe return of the twins but also the reaffirmation of their faith and unity under God's divine protection. As the royal family embraced their restored peace and blessings, they grew stronger in their faith and love for each other. Odafolakak, now honored as the queen and mother of the heirs, continued to guide and support King Ahiomide with wisdom and grace. Thus, the tale of King Ahiomide, Queen Odafolakak, and their faithful twins became a testament to the power of faith, the consequences of betrayal, and the enduring strength of love and righteousness in the ancient city of Yelehese. The Lessons 1. Faith in God King Ahiomide's steadfast faith in God's promise, despite overwhelming challenges, demonstrates the power of trusting in divine guidance even in times of despair. 2. Choosing faith over fear when faced with adversity, King Ahiomide chose to trust in God rather than seeking immediate worldly solutions. This teaches the importance of placing faith above fear and uncertainty. 3. The Power of Prayer and Fasting Through prayer and fasting, King Ahiomide and the people of Ialehese sought divine intervention. This underscores the strength found in communal prayer and spiritual discipline during trials. 4. Celebrating in Faith King Ahiomide's decision to declare days of jubilation and praise amidst mourning reflects the faith-driven celebration of God's promises, even before seeing tangible outcomes. 5. Leadership and Faithful Decision-Making Despite opposition and doubt from his sheaves, King Ahiomide's leadership in maintaining faith-based decisions showcased courage and conviction in following God's guidance. 6. Divine Providence and Deliverance The safe return of Ardeshinar and Ardideir underscored God's faithfulness and intervention in protecting the innocent and thwarting evil intentions. 7. Consequences of Envy and Betrayal the treacherous actions of the three wives, driven by envy and greed, led to severe consequences. This highlights the destructive nature of jealousy and the importance of integrity. 8. Gratitude and Humility King Ahiomide's gratitude and humility in recognizing God's mercy and deliverance reinforce the importance of thankfulness and humility in times of blessing and trial alike. 9. Perseverance Leadership Queen Odafolakak's role as a wise and supportive partner to King Ahiomide exemplifies the importance of persevering. 10. Courage in Faith King Ahiomide's decision to choose Christianity over the traditions of his ancestors demonstrates courage in following one's convictions, even when faced with opposition and uncertainty. This story was conceived by Pastor Sophia Okunowo and developed by Pastor Dunamis Okunowo, your favorite relationship and marriage counselors and therapists. Don't keep this life-changing story to yourself. Share it with your friends, family and social networks. Let's spread the love and build a community of thriving relationships. Do you want more? Read the full blog by clicking on the link in bio.
or description to navigate to the devotionals or go to www.kissesandhugs.org. Watch full video on youtube.com slash at Pastor Dunamis. For one-on-one therapy, counseling, or an intervention in your marriage or relationship, go to bit.ly slash therapy needed. To get courses for singles and couples, go to bit.ly slash course. To partner with us, go to www.kissesandhugs.org slash give.